Two statements stand in stark contrast. Quote, God is light and in him is no darkness at all. 1 John 1, 5. And men love darkness rather than light. John 3, 19. How would God overcome this darkness? The solution is explained in the windowless tabernacle. The light in the holy place was the menorah or lampstand. It must have been beautiful. No mold could make it. Quote, all of it shall be one hammered piece of pure gold. Exodus 25, 36. Weighing about 114 pounds, which would be worth millions at today's rate. The value, however, was not in the gold, but in its breathtaking revelation of truth. Quote, its shaft, its branches, its bowl, its ornamental knobs and flowers shall be of one piece, and six branches shall come out of its sides. The bowl shall be made like almond blossoms with an ornamental knob and a flower. Exodus 25, 31 to 33. It pictured the tree of life, quote, and the life was the light of men, John 1, 4. The almond bud, being the first to flower after winter, usually in February in Israel, pictures the promise of Christ rising. The blossom is symbolic of his endless life, and the almond is the fruit of his victorious resurrection and right to rule. Illustrated by Aaron's rod that, quote, sprouted and put forth buds, produced blossoms and yielded ripe almonds. Numbers 17, verse 8. Does the oil fueling the lamps speak of the spirit or the saints? When we visit the true tabernacle in heaven, we find seven lamps there too. In Revelation 2 and 3, they are God's people shining on earth in the darkness, illuminating Christ. In chapter 4, verse 5, they are God's sevenfold spirit. But isn't that the case? When believers share Christ to others, it's the spirit showing forth our Lord's beauties through us. Remember that all the colorful beauty we see around us is actually in the light. Just so, all the beauties we see in both the first and new creations are from Him. So we pray, let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us. Psalm 90, verse 17. But there is so much more to see here. The main shaft held its own lamp but six branches grew out of it, each adding a lamp. God's people are branches linked with Christ's own life. He said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall have the light of life. John 8, 12. The Lord provides four kinds of light. There is physical light. Quote, God said, let there be light, and there was light. Genesis 1, 3. This light is the secret of growth, the light of generation, as in the menorah. Quote, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. Second, there is intellectual light, as when we say, I see it. This is revelation. Jesus is called a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles, Luke 2:32. Quote, nor does anyone know the Father except the Son, and the one to whom the Son will reveal him. Matthew eleven twenty seven. There is also moral light, the clarity that comes by obeying God's word. Quote, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Psalm 119, 105. Quote, we have the prophetic word confirmed, which you do well to heed as a light that shines in a dark place, 2 Peter 1.19. This is sanctification. And if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanseth us from all sin, 1 John 1.7. In other words, 
our sin will be obvious to us, and by confessing it, we live in happy fellowship with God. Finally, there is the light of glory, whereby the Lord's character is changing us to be like Him. This is transformation. For God, who commanded light to shine out of darkness, has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 4, 6. Truly, the light is sweet. Ecclesiastes 11, verse 7.